Right. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about how we can actually create a page object model for our eaapp.swami.com or the employee app website. So we have been discussing about the eaapp.swami.com website and we also created a page object model with the TypeScript language binding in our earlier section. And in this section, we are going to exactly create the same kind of page object model for the application that we have been automating. So we're going to have a home page. We are we have a login page, we have a create employee page, but we need to somehow abstract the code that we have been writing in the TypeScript or the JavaScript language binding, even in the Java, like a page object model, and then we'll see how it actually works. It's a very cool concept. The page object model is something uh, very, very famous in Selenium language binding, in Selenium tool, and we can probably use the exact same idea over here in Playwright as well. But just that in Selenium, there is something called as page object models element identifier. I mean, each and every element is identified using its iWeb element in say C sharp and web element in Java uh, because it's an interface. And this web element is going to hold all the elements property. So basically that is the selectors property. That's what it holds. So within the selectors uh, property or the iWeb element, it holds the type of element it is something like whether it is identified using an XPath or using the ID or CSS selector or link text and stuff. I mean, that's how the whole identification mechanism works in Selenium language. And that's exactly what happens with other testing tools uh, as well that I have worked with. But in here, in the Playwright, the concept is a bit different. If you go to your Playwright language binding, of Java. So let's say if I just uh, go to this particular page over here, and if I just type the fill method, do you see that it actually brings you up the string of the selector? So basically, the selector is not like a class selector of selector, it is basically a type of string. So all the locators can be identified using string type. And every single identification mechanism is found using its string type not using any other type that you can use to perform an operation. So in this case, performing or creating a page object model will be a bit tricky. So if you don't really get the whole picture of what I'm really talking about, let me just open the repo uh, in the GitHub that we have. And if I go to the repositories, and if I go with Selenium with Cucumber, and if I go to the source, uh, I guess it's on the main and if I go to the pages, if I go to the login page, you can see that each and every page is identified using uh, what is called as a web element over here. And each web element interface actually holds many metadata informations like how the element has been identified using its name. Uh, and the name is actually password. Similarly, you can identify using XPath, CSS, or ID and things of that nature. So this is how things are being identified. And if you're going to perform a click, you can actually use the web element dot click, web element dot submit, something like that. That's how you can do. But over here, everything is tied on the page and each and every page operation that it's going to do, it's going to actually looking for the selector uh, over here. So this is how it has been there. I mean, you can try to wrap up your own method and then you can do it, but I don't really prefer to do it uh, at, the, at the moment. I mean, we can oversimplify this code instead of you know over complicating it uh, by writing our own custom codes. So what I'm gonna do for the page object model over here is I'm gonna simplify the coding as much as I can. I mean, very, very simple. So for the pages, I'm gonna create a new page. I'm gonna call this as home page probably. And this home page is gonna hold our application's home page. So if you remember our eaapp.swami.com website, uh, which we have been looking for almost nine sections so far. And if I go to this particular site, you can see that this is something I consider as home page and it has employee list link and it has the login link, register links and stuff. So once I hit login, this page is going to consider as the login page itself. And if I try to log in using this uh, login page, something like this, then it's going to bring you again the home page. 
and once you click the employee list page it is going to show you a grid i mean you can call this as employee list page if you want to but i'm not going to do it just for the simplicity of this particular uh, particular course i'm just going to leave this guy as it is and once you click the create new button it's going to bring you a create a new user page or something like that so uh, this is how things are actually designed in this particular application so you got the idea right i mean we have already talked about that in our uh, earlier uh, sections like this is exactly the same recording that we did for the app and that's what exactly we are going to be using over here as well so in order to do that i'm going to start creating the pages for the home page and stuff again that's going to be super simple for the page creation and i mean the page creation is going to be as simple as it is going to sound so first thing which we need to know is we need to have a, a page or the local page instance which is going to be the page which we are going to be using to perform certain operations and then i need to have the locators so if you remember for the login link i need to have a lnk login and i can identify the login link using its text which is going to be login do you remember that simple it is so this is really really cool you can identify using its text you can uh, identify using its uh, hyperlink if you want to i mean you can do whatever you want to do and similarly we have something called as a employee list you can identify using the uh, text as well like employee list and similarly uh, for clicking the create new button on the employee list uh, I consider that as a home page you can just click the button as create new like that and similarly to click the log off button and to click the delete button I'm just going to use these identifiers as well that's it you can see that the way that we are identifying the code in the home page is much much simpler so once this is done I can then start creating the action items that I'm going to be uh, doing on this particular home page so I'm just going to do something like public void of click a login and I'm going to do a login over here. So I'm just going to say page dot click and I need to pass the selector, which is nothing but the LNK login in this case. That's it. So you can see that I'm clicking the login button over here. Similarly, if I want to uh, click the employee list, then I can just click using this particular employee link. And similarly, if I need to create a uh, new user, so if I need to click the uh, new user, then I can say public void click create new. Uh, and then I can just do page dot click of btn uh, create new. That's it. As simple as it is. Uh, and then I can click the log off button using the log off, something like that. That's it. This way I can create a super simple home page for my code. And the next thing is I need to create the page for the login page. So if I just go over here, then I can just type the login page and then I can start creating the objects for uh, the login page as well. I mean, the code for the login page is once you click the login, uh, you, you get the username, password and the login button, something like this. You can do that. Remember this? colon text that we can use the CSS letter extension that's exactly what I'm using in here as well you can see that those things still remain exactly the same even in the Java language binding and then I'm gonna do a uh, login operation for uh, the username and the password so I'm just gonna do that over here uh, and I'm gonna do this page dot and you know what to do with uh, filling the value just use the fill method and I'm gonna use the selector, which is gonna be the TXT username and username. That's it. Similarly, for the password, just use, oops, dot fill of TXT password, and it's gonna be password. And similarly, for clicking the button, I can just do page.click of btn login. That's it. It is that simple for the login page. And then I'm gonna create create user page as well. I mean, you can try it yourself. Just give a shot and see how you could able to do that. Just use the same selector that we used in our earlier sections and try to create one more page of yours and see how it actually works. 